Independent and progressive political forces in Chile wins weekend selection of conventional constituents. South Africa started its mass vaccination drive with the goal of inoculating nearly 5 million citizens aged 60 and above by the end of June. Israeli airstrike in Gaza overnight killed more than 2,000 people, the single deadliest attack of the current hostilities. Hello, welcome to From the South. I am Janet Perez Moya from the Telesur Studios in La Habana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Stay with us. In Chile, there is a change. This is shown by the results of the mega elections held this weekend. The mobilizations started by the Chilean youth and the student brutality attack by the government of President Sebastián Piñera provoked the change in the electoral ballot box. And this Monday, Chile is a different country. The election results give a clear victory to the force of change led by the left and the independents. The big losers have been the parties of the right-wing coalition and the social democrats. The Vamos por Chile list, the broad coalition of the right and the extreme right, would not achieve the objective for which the entire right-wing spectrum was grouped. With 21% of their representation, it is the most voted list, but it will be far from being able to influence in the new constitutional articles. The results of the constituent vote, the result of massive social mobilizations at the end of 2018, leaves the new Magna Carta in the hands of the independents and left-wing list. The left-wing list, Aprueba Dignidad and Lista del Pueblo, will collect 18 and 15 of their representation, while the center-left groupings, Lista del Apruebo and Independents No Neutrales, will reach 14 and 7% in each case, the representative will have until June 2022 to deliberate on the text, which will then be voted on by the civilian citizens. The candidate for the Mapuche people, Francisca Lincoln Out, made a call to all constituents to work together in the drafting of a new constitution and also thanks the people for their support. Francisca will be part of the constituents that will make a new constitution for Chile. I call on all the constituents because as a candidate I won with many votes and I say to you that we should work together to move forward and to draft the new constitution and I greet you all and thank you for everything. We will be seeing each other. In the city of Santiago, Chile's capital, Communist Party candidate Tirasi Jacob is confirmed to be the next mayor, a historic achievement of the Communist Party that won against conservative Felipe Alessandri. With odd almost of the vote counted, economist and councilwoman for Santiago since 2017 leads with more than three points ahead of Felipe Alessandri. The electoral body tallies confirmed that the candidate of the Communist Party has more than 31 votes compared to over 28,000 for the now former mayor. The newly elected mayor assured that this Sunday's result are a historic opportunity to transform the city and to achieve a dignified life with welfare. Following this weekend election, President Sebastián Piñera said the outcome showed that his government and political parties were not attuned to the demands and aspirations of citizens. In estas elecciones, citizens have sent a clear and strong message to the government and also to all traditional political forces in these elections. We are not adequately attuned to the demands and aspirations of citizens and we are being challenged by new expressions and new leaderships. Ecuador's public prosecutor office issued an immediate arrest warrant against Ombudsman Freddy Carrion under charge of sexual abuse. According to reports from the public prosecutor's office, the event occurred during a meeting at the home of Mauro Falconi, former Minister of Health in the government of outgoing President 
Lenin Moreno with the Ombudsman and two other people belonging to Carrion's security team. Carrion allegedly tried to sexually assault the wife of the former minister Falconi. The confusing situation was generated in a fight between Falconi and Carrion that required the intervention of the police force. And once the proceedings were carried out by the public prosecutor's office, the arrest of the Ombudsman was ordered. In Colombia, protests continue against the government of Ivan Duque. Last night, security forces attacked peaceful protesters in Jumbo, Valle del Cauca, with helicopters and vehicles firing tear gas and projectiles close to homes. A cordial relationship between the local strike committee and the mayor of Jumbo has prevailed. This Monday morning, a meeting has been arranged to start talks between both parties. Unknown people, not members of the social movement, tried to set fire to a police station, leading to the violent response of the security forces. Neighborhood movements also mobilized the safe word, the place, but uh, they were attacked by the anti-riot squad who arrest two people. The police attack with a helicopter used to shot at the neighbors in the area left a large number of wounded who are being treated by the medical assistant teams in a temporary health center. Breathe, breathe. They threw the bombs against the door of the house. That's the way they are. Mom is coming. Where's mom? Here comes the mother. Look, look, there's the mother. Look what they are doing here, Mr. Mayor of Jumbo. Look at the people. The child is here. The child is fine. In Colombia, indigenous protester has blocked the Pan American Highway demonstrating against President Ivan Duque and his government. Indigenous protesters have uh, rejected the government's land policies and the assault of women during protests. The road blockades in the Cauca department have caused fuel and food shortage in the south of the country as anti-government protests have entered their third week. Clashes between police and protesters have resulted in at least 42 deaths and more than 1,500 injuries. Faced with the pain caused by the murder and massacre committed by the national government, this blocking the Pan-American Highway is a decision taken by the National Minga on behalf of the indigenous authorities of the Southwest. It has been declared that this will continue indefinitely. More news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. This Monday, South Africa started its mass vaccination drive with the goal of inoculating nearly 5 million citizens aged 60 and above by the end of June. To start the campaign, shots of the Pfizer vaccine were given to people aged 60 and older living in nursing homes. So far, the country has vaccinated over 478,000 of its healthcare workers with Johnson & Johnson vaccines, my pardon, and it plans to give the shots to the remainder of its 1.2 million health workers by the end of this week. Authorities in the country report that several citizens 60 years and older, as well as health workers, have completed their online registrations to get vaccinated. South Africa now has nearly 1 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine after receiving a delivery of more than 300,000 doses of the vaccine on Sunday night. This Monday, in Japan, a new poll showed that more than 80% of Japanese oppose hosting the Olympic this year. The latest survey carried out at less than 10 weeks before the Tokyo Games came after Japan extended a coronavirus state of emergency 
as the nation faces a fourth wave of infections. The surge in cases has put pressure on the country's healthcare system, with medical professionals repeatedly warning about shortage and exhaustion. The opinion poll found 43% of the population wants the 2020 games cancelled, and 40% wants a further postponement. Only 14% support holding the Olympic this summer as a schedule. I believe we must not hold the Olympics just for the convenience of the IOC and the Tokyo government. There is no reason, none, for us to have to hold the Games now when infection is spreading through the country, when we are under the state of emergency and when athletes are suffering in many ways. If authorities put priority on the economy, I want them to leave the restrictions on restaurants and bars. If they prioritize the antivirus measures, I want them to cancel the Olympics. I am here to protest against the Games because their policies are so contradictory. In India, tens of thousands of people have been evacuated from their homes as a severe cyclone heads toward the northwest state of Wajarat. According to press reports, the powerful cyclone Toutai is the biggest of, to hit western India in 30 years. Heavy rains, intense winds and destructive storms had already affected some states along the country's western coast, causing blackouts, dowen trees and resulting in at least six deaths. The Indian Meteorological Department report that the storm, which originated in the Arabian Sea, has winds of over 155 to 165 kilometers per hour. Due to the intensity of the cyclone, authorities in Mumbai closed the airports for several hours and urged people to stay indoors as they transfer COVID patients to safer locations. According to climate expert Roxy Matthew Cole from the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, rapid ocean warming is behind the increase in the storm forming in the Arabian Sea of the coast of western India. An example of this is Cyclone Tuktai. Uh, one of the reasons that we are seeing more, more storms and cyclones in, in the tropical regions, especially regions like Arabian Sea and all, is because of ocean warming, rapid ocean warming. Storms and cyclones draw their energy from warm ocean waters. And now what is happening? The Arabian Sea temperatures, the ocean surface temperatures are warming rapidly. And that has resulted in this sudden spurt of uh, uh, you know, storms and cyclones forming over the Arabian Sea in the, in the recent decades. The International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia and Biphobia is celebrated every year on May 17th to denounce the discrimination suffered by all people with sexual preference different from the conventional ones, such as homosexuals, transsexuals, bisexuals and lesbians around the world. In 2021, the theme chosen by the campaign is Together Resisting, Supporting, Healing, in a clear reference to the current context of recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Many countries today see homosexuality as an evil of society and in some of them, harsh high condemn people who engage in this practice to the point of having to go to prison. And there are even places where their lives are taken away. In the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development established by the United Nations, it is expects the approval of policies and laws and thus and once for all discrimination which has caused so many social problems to all mankind. Every May 15, 17 is a plea for respect, tolerance and peace for the non heteropatric communities and their rights to a full and happy life. More news in a minute, join us again after this. Welcome back. Israeli airstrikes hammered by Gaza Strip on Monday after a week of violence that has left nearly 2,000 people dead, the large majority Palestinians, many of them children, despite international calls for de-escalation. Dozens of Israeli strikes bombarded 
the crowded coastal Palestinian enclave controlled by Islamist group Hamas. Flames lit up the sky as intensive explosions shook Gaza City, sparking widespread power kits and damaging hundreds of buildings, local authorities said. No casualties were immediately reported. The renewed strike came a day after 42 Palestinians in Gaza, including at least eight children and two doctors, according to Health Minister, were killed in the worst daily death toll since the bombardments began. Jordan's Deputy Prime Minister on Sunday called on Israel to stop the aggression on Gaza as international efforts to broker a ceasefire continue. Israel, as a occupying power, is responsible for the dangerous situation in the Palestinian occupied lands and all that is caused from violence, killing, destruction and suffering. Escalation must stop and stop the aggression of Gaza and stop all illegitimate Israeli practice that basically targeted this escalation in occupied Jerusalem and the rest of the Palestinian lands. You must act immediately to achieve this and to provide protection for the Palestinian people. In the context of the violent events in Palestine, citizens of countries such as Poland, Italy and Canada have expressed their solidarity and support for the Palestinian cause. Large crowds protest today in Warsaw, Milan and Toronto in solidarity with the Palestinian and in protests against Israeli aggression in Gaza and Jerusalem. In Warsaw, the citizens also condemn the annexionist plans carried out by Israel in the Palestinian territories of the West Bank, Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip. For its part, the Palestinian ambassador to Poland, Mahmoud Khalifa, said these demonstrations are yet another sign of the international community's support for the Palestinian people. The United Nations Security Council met to discuss the conflict in public. For the first time, Secretary General Antonio Guterres was the first of nearly two dozen speakers on the agenda of the meeting, led by delegation from China. Norway, Tunisia and China expressed deep concern about the situation in Gaza and the rising number of civilian casualties and called for an immediate end of hostility, full respect for international law including international humanitarian law and the protection of civilians, especially children. We demanded immediate cessation of all acts of violence, provocation, incitement, destruction and eviction plans. The most urgent and pressing task at this moment is to cease fire and stop violence. What's equally important is to, uh, is to advance a just settlement of the Palestinian question on the basis of two-state solution. These are flagrant violations of international humanitarian law and they must be stopped now. Tunisia believes that hostilities must stop and cross-border to the besieged uh, occupied Palestinian territory must be reopened to allow much needed humanitarian and medical assistance to an extremely vulnerable population which was before the escalation already under dire humanitarian situation because of the blockade and other oppressive measures. According to a video footage obtained by Palestinian lawyer Lema Nasik, Israeli security forces have also brutally attacked Palestinian women in the Haik Harash neighborhood of its Jerusalem. The Palestinian neighborhood has become a flashpoint in the ongoing clashes, and it is one of the main areas where Israeli settlers are trying to evict Palestinian families. An Israeli airstrike has destroyed a tower block that houses media outlets, including the Associated Press and Al Jazeera. No casualties has been reported from the airstrike so far. The owner of the building said the Israeli military warned him about the planned strike, and people were evacuated before the bombing of the building. The Israel army claimed that the building contained military assets belonging to Hamas.
Iran has accused Israel of genocide and crimes against humanity against Palestinians during a virtual meeting with the 57 Nations Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The emergency meeting is the first major move among the Middle East nations still grappling with how to address the conflict. The criminal acts of Israel should be recognized as genocide and crimes against humanity by both domestic legislation in our own countries and OIC resolutions. Make no mistake, Israel only understands the language of resistance and the people of Palestine are fully entitled to their right to defend themselves and to defy the bullying of this racist regime. The massacre of Palestinian children today follows the purported normalization. This criminal and genocidal regime has once again proven that friendly gestures only aggravate its atrocities. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. For Telesur English, I am Janet Perez Moya. Thank you for watching.